Okay, so welcome to this next video. So, um, we are discussing how the drug methotrexate works, and we've now seen how it works to stop proliferation in cancer cells. It stops the production of all thymine-containing nucleotides by inhibiting the dihydrofolate reductase enzyme. Okay, now uh, this stops uh, protein synthesis and also DNA replication and therefore leads to complete cessation of cell cycling. Okay, now um, we have discussed that this drug will have a huge um, amount of toxicity on uh, normal cells within the body. Now, to try and limit the damage that the methotrexate drug does to the ordinary cells of the body, uh, there is a drug that's often given alongside methotrexate, known as leucovorin, which is actually another vitamin. Uh, so, we're going to look at why this will help in this video. Okay, so we need to discuss a few more um, structures, basically. So, we discussed um, long ago now that um, tetrahydrofolate can be converted into N5N10 methylene tetrahydrofolate. But there's actually another molecule it can be uh, turned into, and we need to discuss this now uh, so that we can discuss other related molecules which can also produce this N5N10 methylene tetrahydrofolate. Okay, right. So, we'll start off with this molecule that you can also turn tetrahydrofolate into. So, tetrahydrofolate can also be turned into a molecule known as N10 formal tetrahydrofolate. So, we can turn tetrahydrofolate into this other molecule known as N10 formal tetrahydrofolate. And this basically, in whoops, missed the dash there, tetrahydrofolate. This basically involves sticking a formic acid group onto the tetrahydrofolate molecule. Okay, so let me show you the structure of this. So we'll revise our tetrahydrofolate structure again. So here is our semi-pyrimidine ring here. Okay, the six-membered ring. Alternating double and single bonds, but instead of a double bond up here, you have a carbonyl group and a hydrogen off that nitrogen. You then have an amino group here, okay, and then you have the pyrazine ring, which is no longer a pyrazine ring because you've added those four hydrogens onto it. Okay, so here are these two nitrogens, like so, and each of these nitrogens has a hydrogen coming off it, which we need to show because we show all uh, hydrogens unless they come off a carbon atom. We then have this methylene group linked to the amino group up here, and now this we know is the tenth nitrogen. Remember the way that we name the components in this ring. Here's one, two, three, four, four A, five, six, seven, eight, eight A, nine, ten. Okay, so this is the tenth um, element, and we've now linked it to a formal group. And what is a formal group? Well, the structure of formic acid if I draw its um, molecular formula, because the skeletal formula is quite odd, it's basically just a one carbon carboxylic acid, so this is formic acid. It's what would now be called methanoic acid. Okay, So we have bound uh, methanoic acid, or formic acid, to this uh, amino group here, this nitrogen, and there we have this carbon with this carbonyl group off, and then we just don't show the hydrogen, so it looks rather odd, but that is the complete structure. Okay, and then we have this benzene ring coming off here, which is always a little squashed. Okay, and then off here we have this carbonyl group involved in this amide link, and this is very squashed now. And then we'll have to draw this sort of like this. So we're stretching this bond out hugely so that we can actually draw this carboxylic acid group coming up like so. So that we can keep the structures anal analogous to what we've seen previously. These two methylene groups followed by this carboxylic acid group right at the end. And you should be getting bored of this structure by now. Okay, right. So there is N10 formal tetrahydrofolate. Now, um, you can turn this molecule into another molecule, which is known as leucovorin. 
Okay, so we're now going to see the structure of the molecule leucovorin. So, this molecule can be converted into something known as leucovorin, and the full name for leucovorin is n 5 formyl tetrahydrofolate Okay, tetra hydrofolate, and you can guess what this is going to be, because we know what the fifth nitrogen is. This is this nitrogen here. So you would think that all you've done is exchange this formal group onto this nitrogen here, and that's exactly what you've done. Okay, so we'll draw the structure out again just for completion. Okay, so here is this uh, pyrimidine ring here. The nitrogens, like so. Whoops, okay. And we have these alternating double bonds and single bonds, except that this double bond up here has been replaced by the carbonyl group. And then we have the amino group down here. Then we have the pyrazine ring off here. And now, this is the fifth element here. So this is N5 that it's referring to in the name. Okay, so we've taken that hydrogen off N5. And instead now, we've stuck this formal group on. And remember, formal has a very odd-looking structure in skeletal formulae, because that's the carbon, and here's the carbonyl group, and that's all we need, basically. Okay, then we've got this methylene group coming off here. We've now got our nitrogen here, and this nitrogen now has a hydrogen back on it. So basically, what we've done is we've cleaved this bond here, and cleaved this bond here, and exchanged the hydrogen for the formal group and swapped it from the 10th nitrogen to the 5th nitrogen. Okay, so then we've got our benzene ring here. <laughs> okay, so this is the benzene ring. And then we've got our amide link here. So the carbonyl group, the amino group, and then I'll have to stretch this out again so that we can then put our alpha carbon here and our carboxylic acid group coming off up here. And this is then our R group of glutamate, one, two, and then here's our carboxylic acid group down here. Okay, right. So that then is N5 formal tetrahydrofolate, and this has a bunch of other names. It's also known as leucovorin. It can also be known as folinic acid. Okay, folinic acid, and finally, it's also got the other name. Citrovorum factor. Citrovorum factor. Okay, right. So, we will see what you can actually do with this molecule before we actually discuss why this is helpful. But this drug is often given uh, with methotrexate to try and limit the damage, and we'll try and understand why. So, firstly, n 5 formal tetrahydrofolate uh, can be converted back to n 10 formal tetrahydrofolate. So there is a reverse reaction, but that's no use unless you can actually reverse this step here, which you can't... Oops, so you can't see this. It's no use unless you can reverse this step here. We could see the advantage if you could reverse this step here, but you can't, basically. The advantage, if we could reverse this step here, is we'd be able to generate tetrahydrofolate in a mechanism that was um, circumventing dihydrofolate reductase, which was needed to create it from folic acid, remember. Re it's also worth stressing that the um, process of converting dihydrofolate reductase, sorry, tetrahydrofolate to N5, N10 methylene tetrahydrofolate, that is not dependent on dihydrofolate reductase. So this conversion here is not inhibited by methotrexate. Methotrexate is inhibiting the production of tetrahydrofolate from folic acid. So we could see the advantage of um, putting in leucovorin if it could be used to generate tetrahydrofolate without uh, needing dihydrofolate reductase, but it doesn't do that. So what's the use of this then? Okay, well basically, you can convert N5 formal tetrahydrofolate into another molecule, and this next molecule can then be used to create N5, N10 methylene uh, tetrahydrofolate. Okay, so the next molecule you can convert this into is a molecule known as N5 
N10 methenyl, so methenyl tetrahydrofolate. Okay, and this is the final molecule that I'm going to show you in this video. So, uh, N5, N10 methenyl tetrahydrofolate. Right, and we'll look at the structure of this molecule in the next video.